Hello guys, welcome back to another video. As you can see, these are baby crayfishes. I don't know if you guys ever seen baby crayfish before, but there they are. I have finally uh, collected most of them in two breeding containers. So this is my 20 gallon tank and then I uh, this is my female that was buried and then, oh, there's, there's one that I need to collect. Uh, I collected 50. So there's 25 in here and there's 25 in here as well. So total I've collected 50 baby crayfishes. So approximate number of baby crayfish a crayfish gives um, is I, th I personally think anywhere from 30 to 60. It really varies depending on situation and how many times it's given birth before. But um, about, you know, about 45 to 55 is a good estimate. And out of 50, if you do a really, really good job, about 45 will survive. But, um, you know, if you do, you know, okay job, about 30 to 35. But uh, yes, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys and walk you guys through in details of how to properly care for these uh, little ones. Um, I have actually, this is my second time caring for the baby baby crayfish, like super tiny ones like these. Because as you guys already know, my first batch grew up and then they're ready to be sold. And they're, yeah, they're about this big right now. Hmm, where are they? Like they're all hiding. But uh, right there. So this is one of the larger sizes. And then this 10 gallon tank has a smaller size down there. Oh, there's one on the rock right there. So uh, these were my first batches that are in these tanks right here. This 30, this one right here in the 75 gallon tank. And then the large one, this is actually the biggest, biggest um, baby crayfish. I've separated him into the 17 gallon container. Uh, because he is too large for other baby crayfishes, but uh, yeah, so there's a way to separate all of these guys when th once they are grown. But uh, when they're this tiny, when they're like born yesterday, tiny, um, you have to separate them into these little tiny containers. Is what I recommend. Um, so these guys were born about three, four days ago, and then I kept them with their mom for past four days. Because past couple of days, uh, when they're out of their, you know, mom's little tummy, they have to get used to the environment. And then mom gives out something called like some kind of pheromone or something like that, that, you know, calls for its babies to stay close and whatnot. So I give them time to bond a little bit and then no longer about, no longer than like five days, only because the female, you know, they start for a month. Of course, they're hungry. So anything they, anything the female finds in the tank is going to be food. So it's been about four days, so I decided to, you know, let the babies free and then collect them all. And as of right now, I've collected 50. And I think there's about 10 more. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a couple more in this tank. Let me spot one for you guys. Um, if there's any, I can spot. If you can spot it, that's great too. But uh, yes. So when they're born, give about three to four days to stay with their mom and then make sure to separate the male when the female's buried though. That's like a month back, you know? So this female's been in this 20 gallon tank alone for a month. So, I see, so once the male and female mates together, you're gonna wanna separate the male in about a week after the female's buried because the, the male tends to get aggressive and the female kind of gets to be a little more sensitive. In this case, I can show you an example actually. In this 10 gallon tank, I have that one is a male back there and then this one is a female. She's been hiding in there for about a week and I'm ready to separate the male and the male can't do anything because the female is very aggressive now since she is buried. Since it's been about a week that this female has been buried. I'm going to separate the male into this either 17 gallon uh, container right here or a separate chamber that I have ready for uh, other adult males that are too aggressive. But yeah, you have to make sure to separate the males into a separate tank. And then in terms of these little tiny guys, um, there's nothing too different, honestly, compare 
compared to uh, taking care of the adults. So first you separate them like I did and then feed them the same kind of food that you give the older, the, the bigger crayfishes. In my case, I feed the crayfish a shrimp food. I forgot, the which, I forgot which brand it was, but I feed them pellet food, shrimp pellet food. And then for these guys, I just crush them up into little tiny, those little, little crumbs. So these guys can, you know, munch on them and whatnot. And as you can see, this one is carrying its little tiny food. It's so hard to focus since they are so small. But the small ones will be carrying its food and, you know, roam around the entire place, find a good place to, you know, stop and munch on its food and whatnot and go about its day. So that's the first, you know, couple of steps. You let it alone with his mom and then separate it into, uh, you know, a little tiny breeding container. And you have them in here uh, until they are about maybe so from from the point that you separate them into these tiny little breeding tanks breeding containers you want to keep them in there for about anywhere from week to two weeks um, depends on honestly the whole thing depends on how like how much you feed and how fast these guys grow so if right now it looks super empty because they're so tiny but uh, once it gets once it looks crowded and whatnot you want to you know take them take a couple crayfish out in the tank and whatnot and stuff like that so yes uh, feeding and steps to releasing them and containing them that's um, that's you know the steps that you would take and in this case as you can see this tank has a lot of you know decoration you know the soil and everything but uh, compared to this tank this tank has no gravel or anything like that it just has a lot of hiding spaces um, I actually organized this tank uh, earlier today so there's a bit of a comparison right there. So one above, um, I will most likely clean out the entire tank after I contain all the baby crayfishes only because uh, the soil isn't exactly necessary. Or I guess I'll wait about two weeks to about a month and clean that out. But uh, yeah, if you have a you know bottomless tank, basically you know soilless tank like this, it's much easier to take care of. And in my case, I need them you know, organized and clean like this only because I supply these guys to retailers and I need to make sure of the count and the quality of the water is good and the filtration is perfect. So if we are talking about this 75 gallon tank, this is a proper tank for crayfish breeding. The reason that I tell you that is because it has enough amount of aeration going on from that filter and that filter can hold up to 50 gallon and this is a 75 gallon tank. And as you can see the water is only halfway which is about you know 40 gallons, about 40, 37 to 40 gallons and whatnot and that, tank, that filter does a 50 an hour. Uh, it does more, more than a 50 an hour but uh, it's capable of doing a 50. But anyway, I have that on constantly, not you know all day long, but um, intermittently, a time to time and whatnot. And I have that, and then in that corner, I actually have a, a water pump. And then in this corner, as you can see, I have a water pump. It circulates the water like in a circular motion so that all the water in the tank gets filtered. And I have a lot of hiding spaces as you can see and that's very important when you're breeding crayfishes unlike shrimps like I've shown you guys before those guys don't exactly need hiding spaces since they're not aggressive towards each other but these guys they rip arms and legs and they just honestly they tear the other other one apart when they have the chance to do so so you must have hiding spaces like this I have a lot of you know little tunnels and there's a couple crayfish hiding in there like this but this is like a stage when these guys are about you know about your your you know little your thumb size about an inch to uh, inch and a half size right there is the kind of care that you have to give in their stage and if they're like this big I don't know if you can tell how big these guys are but they're about an inch to half an inch depending on you know their life is stage of life and whatnot but yeah this tank is cycled very well the filtration is great a lot of hiding spaces and whatnot bottomless it has no soil no gravel or no sand or anything like that so the water actually you know circulates throughout the entire tank which is great 
So yes, that's basically it when it comes to caring for the small, young little ones to about an inch to inch and a half. And these guys, I think they're about a month to a month and a half. I'm not too sure, but about seven weeks old. And these guys are five days old. So that's the comparison right there. So yes, if you guys have any questions on, on how to care for these young, please let me know down in the comment section and then if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. And thank you guys for watching. Let me get like a thumbnail if I can with these little guys. I don't know if I can. These guys are so tiny. Maybe there. All right. Okay, so I have collected 55 crayfishes, baby crayfishes in each of these little uh, breeding containers. There's 55 in here and there's 55 in here. This one female crayfish gave birth to over 120 crayfishes and since um, there's like like about 15 more out here I'm gonna say 120 but uh, what I'm doing since there's too many in these little tiny containers I'm gonna use this one large uh, breeding container that I have extra and put about 30 in there so 110 divided by 3 is like 35 ish so I'm gonna take about you know 15 each I guess from each of the containers and I moved five in here already so let's go and do that look at these guys so tiny there's a little bit of thumbnail and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye